when we learn how to write functions in Python, we probably learn that the return statement is the last thing that we'll ever run in a function. So let's define a simple function. So test, and let's say return 1, return 2, and return 3. And let's call test. And if we run this, we are going to get 1. So after our first return statement, nothing else happens inside the function. So this will never run. And this will never run also. Similarly, let's write another function. So let's say fruits is equals to apple, orange, pear, and for fruit in fruits, return fruit. So let's run test 2, and we are going to get apple. So here, we have a for loop that loops through the fruits list. So fruit will first become apple, orange, and then pear. However, inside the for loop, we return fruit, which means that the moment that fruit is apple, we return apple. And that's why this function will return apple, and it will not even go to orange or pear. So once again, usually, after the return statement in a function, nothing else happens in a function. However, this is not always the case, and stuff can in fact run after the return statement. So let's explore how we can do this. But first, we need to understand the try, accept, finally block. So for those of you who are not too familiar with this, in a try block, we run risky code that could cause an error. And in the accept block, we run code that handles the error. And in the finally block, our code will always run. So code will always run. So a more specific example would be this. So try. So let's say x is equals to 1 divided by 0. So accept and print. You cannot divide by 0. And finally, we print. This will always run. So in the try block, we set x is equals to 1 divided by 0, and this will forcefully cause a 0 division error. So in this case, because there is a 0 division error, the accept block here will run. And after the accept block runs, the finally block, which will always run, will run. And so if we run this, we will get you cannot divide by 0, and this will always run. So now, let's add this to our functions. Let's define a test and try return hello except do nothing and finally print this happens after the return statement. So let's print test and this will happen. So here in our try block we return hello and in our finally block we print this happens after the return statement. So what's happening here is that the finally block here will always run, even after the return statement. So let's add more stuff to our function. So print 1, print 2. Here let's run print 3 and print 4. So in this case, print 1 and print 2 will run, and the function will return hello. And print 3 and print 4 won't run. Here, the finally block will still run, as it will always run, even after the return statement. So once again, let's run this and this will happen. So here we get 1, 2 and this happens after the return statement. However, you may ask, but why do we even bother with this? So here's why. In more realistic functions, in the try block, we write code that could cause an error. And in the accept block, we handle the error. And in the finally block, we usually run cleanup code that must run. So a more specific example would be this. So we can do stuff with, let's say, an Excel file. And then here we have our accept block. So we do stuff to handle errors. And in our finally block, we save the Excel file. And here we have it, how we can execute code after the return statement. So thanks for watching, and hopefully you have learned something new about Python today.